I want to imagine that all of us have a story about being a man. What you have been told is, you know, a man should be. But today's space is not about uh, the theories. It's about real stories. What is your story? There's so many things that people think being a man is. And maybe those things are true. Maybe they are false. But why don't we start with an honest conversation about how, what, what is it that can we say being a man is? For me, my, 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 my masculinity has been defined by bringing up women. So that's what I consider being a man. I brought up three girls and a boy alone. So, and that, it has taught me also how much I don't know and recognize who I am and accepting. I live my life unapologetically. So my definition, a man is me. Okay. After working with uh, over 50,000 men in the last 12 years, I've come to realize that uh, manhood is who you are within, is not what defines you without. Um, and for me, I, I say it's just honor, duty, care. From the medical perspective, I mean, a man, you have the main male, you know, physical characteristics. That's who you are. But then there's the gender, the male gender, and there's a certain way that, you know, society uh, ascribes uh, to. What is that crisis that Kenyan men have? Who do we speak? When we have issues, emotional issues, we discuss with the women. Because you can't tell your man, you can't talk about emotion with your men friends or your men in society without being judged. And so you're afraid. So when you go to men to discuss your issues with your men friends, you go for solutions, not emotions. And after, actually most of the time they tell you, come on, man up. I don't know what that means. You need to allow this man to, 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 to express themselves and show emotion, right? And that's where the crisis is. The crisis I've seen with men over the years is identity and purpose. A lot of men just don't know who they are anymore. Part of it is the changes we have because a lot of the young men here, uh, according to stats, are likely to marry a woman who is earning more than them. How's that a problem? So that's so, what I ask. Yes. Eh? I should ask the men, would you marry a lady like that? And only two out of a hundred would raise their hands, the strategic ones. The rest of them, they feel uh, this is too much. Why? Because men see money as power, while women see money as security. There's a generational change also in terms of um, how we are parenting these people. It's very different from how we were parented. So these conversations are very important, and especially for some of us who are raising boys alone, I think for me, the biggest conversation for me here is to see who will stand in the gap for these many boys, and there are many. I just remember the meme uh, where there's a goat, and then up here it's written, this is how ladies see you when you don't have money. Yeah, I don't know whether you guys have seen that meme. Yeah, so yeah, it just basically tells you about the societal pressure for men to, you know, be in, on, at a certain level and uh, that money defines a man. Every relationship has to do with respect for each other, caring, and things like that. So I think that if you really open up to those real emotions and sentiments and true caring, then money is not that important. Some specific questions that came, I think it was about sexual health, um, but let me start with a few dog first. Um, does size matter? Does size make a man? I'll tell you for free, it's like, size does not matter it is a skill it's what you do with it and then sex is more than just um, penetration there's a lot of physical connection from a christian perspective being a th uh, how does it being a therapist as well uh, i think sex is meant to be an enjoyment between two people traditionally it was a man having his day uh, and the woman just being there to serve him we have seen many men dying in the line of duty they are coming while going. So this thing called the blue pill, are men overdoing it to perform to women or women have elongated their standards? So I think a lot of that is because of the, again, the pressure that sometimes society or some perceived pressure, you know, that men have to perform in a certain way. Uh, for the most part, the help and the indication for use of those uh, medications. There are people who have diabetes, for example, and we know diabetes does affect sexual function, and so some of those medications actually help to, you know, sort those some of those things. But however, when we start using them as recreation drugs, 
then that's when now, you know, we start seeing issues. My partner showed men responsibility. And responsibility is owning up to your mistakes, apologizing, and fixing them. Second, be ambitious. We need to leave this world better than we found it. There are so many voices out there telling me what I need to do. And I've really loved how this conversation has really enabled us to understand that at the end of it all, it's a, it's a voice within, you know. There are so many factors out here, but what we let control us is what maybe defines uh, us, us, us as men. Thank you.